hi guys welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new without further ado let's go ahead and get straight into today's video so for today's video we're going to be doing our last halloween set and i know it's november so yeah um i'm a little late <laughs> but anyways we're going to be wrapping it up with a freestyle that i drew a few days ago and i will put it up on the screen for you guys to see but we are going to be doing some clown nails now I took inspiration from a lot of different clown nail sets that I saw over the past like couple of weeks or so. And this is what I came up with on my own and I'm super excited about it. And I know for a fact it's gonna take a while. So let's go ahead and jump into that. But before we jump into that, I do just wanna kind of mention a few things um, and this may be a little bit unprecedented, but I kinda wanna talk a little bit more about Palestine. I just really want to urge you guys to get on social media and to do your research and you know look at what people are saying about not only Palestine, but as well as as Congo and Sudan, please, please, please look into what is going on in the Middle East as well as countries in Africa. It is really, really, really disturbing what is happening. And I just want to make sure that I'm using my platform to make you guys aware of certain things. And I know in the video that I made about Palestine, a lot of people were super supportive about it and they also commented and showed their solidarity to the Palestinians right now. And I just wanna say thank you guys so, so much for that. But I also just kind of wanna mention that there were like a few people who were kind of wondering why I was talking about it or they didn't really feel comfortable with me talking about politics in my videos. And I just wanna make something clear for those who are confused or don't wanna see this type of content from me. I want to make it clear that I'm very much vocal about things that I'm passionate about in my everyday life and I am not going to be treating my YouTube channel any different. So if there's something that I'm super passionate about, I am going to talk about it, especially in a situation where we are witnessing a very pivotal moment in history. This is not something that I can afford to not talk about. And it is a little bit awkward being that a lot of the content creators that I watch on YouTube aren't really speaking about it. Um, so it does make me very uncomfortable. I feel a little bit awkward and I feel out of place, but I can deal with that uncomfortability, if that's even a word. I can deal with that awkwardness if it means that I can spread awareness about something that's super serious. And I will continue to kind of mention Palestine, Congo, and Sudan in my upcoming videos. That is not something that I plan on stopping. This is not a one and done type of thing. Like this is something that we need to keep our eyes on and we need to keep being vocal about it. So yes, I do inspire you to get on social media, especially TikTok where you have a lot of people who have firsthand experience as to what is going on and have ties to the ethnicities and races of people that are directly being affected. And not only are people seeing what's going on in Palestine, but they are also seeing what's going on in Congo and Sudan. It is a very disturbing, disturbing thing to think about and to talk about, but I do feel like people need to be aware of it, especially here on YouTube. I don't think people are really talking about it at all. And you know what? If I have to be the first person or one of the first people to talk about it, then I will, even if I don't have all of the answers. So yeah, not to mention I am a person of color. So I feel an obligation to speak about injustice. And also if you didn't watch my video on Palestine, then I will leave it in the cards above, if not in the description box below where you can watch it. And I do have some donation links. I have a lot of information that I found in that video. It's not a perfect video and there's probably some valuable information that I might have left out by accident, but I don't know everything. So I tried my best to include things that would be helpful to us as, you know, people who aren't directly affected by it. And in the video's description, I do have some donation links, but I do want to kind of stress that we should not only be donating, we should also be, you know, protesting whenever you can please make sure that you are voting. Like, please, please vote. Not only should you be voting, you should also be, you know, boycotting and supporting brands that are, you know, supporting justice and equality. If you can't do any of those things, which I'm pretty sure you can do at least one, if you cannot, please, please, please make sure you are talking about it, reposting videos, sharing them, following people who are staying up to date with the news, 
And yeah, that is, you know, things that can help in situations like this. Now, I'm not exactly sure what we can do for Congo at this moment. I think the only thing we can do is like donate, um, but I will be looking into that in the future. And if I can put more information about what we can do for Congo and Sudan, I will leave it in a pinned comment in the comment section. So yeah, I just wanted to quickly mention that. So that was definitely longer than what I envisioned. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So here is what my natural nails are looking like. As you can see, they are definitely a little bit grown out, but they're not too bad. Like they just need a little bit of help. So the first thing I'm going to do is just push back my cuticles using my cuticle pusher. So as you can see, I do still have a little bit of like crust and stuff from my last nail set. So I'm just going to use this end to go ahead and get rid of that. Now I have been thinking I kind of want to try and grow out my nails so I'm not going to cut them down or anything. I'm just going to go straight in with my matte peel off base coat and we'll go from there. So for my matte peel off base coat I will be using a little bit of cuticle oil and some matte top coat. Now I haven't shown this in a while so I'm just going to show you guys how I do that in case you don't know. So the first thing I like to do is take a very small amount of cuticle oil and place it onto my nails and I kind of just like to make sure that there's not too much on the tip of this little nozzle. Now this is way too much. So what I'm gonna do is swipe most of that off and whatever is left on the nail is what I'm gonna go ahead and rub in. And the reason I use so little is because matte top coat is a lot more gentle than like a base coat or a top coat. And I really don't want these to come off in the middle of me trying to do my nail set. And now I'm gonna go in with two layers of my matte top coat. And for me personally, because I like to use acrylic, I do go in with two coats just to make sure that the acrylic is not seeping through and attaching to my natural nails because that just makes it very, very difficult to pop off. And of course, I just make sure to cure each layer for a full 30 seconds. And while I'm curing this, I just wanna make sure that you know that when you're using this method, the heat spikes will kind of be kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of crazy, especially if your nails are very thin and or damaged. So do be very careful. Okay, so the matte peel off face coat is fully applied and I also went ahead and sized out all of my nail tips for today. And to glue on these nail tips, I'm gonna be using a little bit of face coat. And before I cut these down, I'm gonna go over this with a single layer of that base coat. Okay, so I want these nails to be pretty long, so I'm gonna cut them down to the length of my pinky. I'm kind of just gonna match them up and whatever is overlapping here, I'm just gonna cut. All right, and lastly, before we get into the application, I'm just going to quickly shape them up using my 8080 grit nail file. And for this part, I'm really just focusing on the tip of the nail. All right, the nail tips are nice and prepped and we are finally ready to move on to the application.
Okay, so here is what my application is looking like. And now we're gonna go ahead and start shaping these up. And I actually did go ahead and buy a dust collector. So let me go ahead and show you guys that and we'll do like a little unboxing. Okay, so I have my Melody Susie nail dust collector and this box is huge. So it's kind of like out of frame a little bit, but whatever. So let's go ahead and open this up. Oh gosh. Okay, and we have a little instruction manual. I'm not gonna look at this. Anyway, this thing is actually kind of bigger than I thought it would be, but that's okay. And I'm really excited to use a dust collector because y'all, the amount of dust that I have to clean up every single time I do my nails is crazy. It's crazy. All right, so here's the dust collector. And this is the one that does have the touch on and off button and the like speed setting. All right, so she's plugged in and actually I did go ahead and buy some baby wipes also. Let me go ahead and get those. Okay, so yeah, I got some baby wipes and I got these with the intention of putting it on top so I won't have to worry about it getting into the filter on the inside. So yeah, let's try that and see how that works. And y'all, I don't know why, but these are like kind of, they kind of smell bad. Um, Anyway, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start shaping the sidewalls and undersides of my nails using my 88 grit nail file. And I think I'm gonna use this on the highest speed setting first. All right, so the sidewalls and undersides of my nails are shaped up and I don't know about this yet exactly. The verdict is still out for this, but the real test will be for when I actually go in and start sealing my cuticles with my electric file. So let's go ahead and do that. So next I'm gonna go ahead and start sealing my cuticles using this medium carbide bit here. And just for reference, I will be using this at eight to 10,000 RPMs. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and file over the surface of the nails using that same 80-80 grit nail file.
Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce the free edge and just make it a little bit more crisp. And lastly, I'm going to go back in with my carbide fit just to thin out the undersides and make this part a little bit more thick. All right, so my nails are nice and shaped up. So let me give my little review on this dust collector. I will say that it works pretty good. However, do not get this with the intention of this getting rid of any and all dust being on your table or anything like that. I will say that this kind of decreases the amount of dust probably by like 75 to 80%. So that's pretty good for me. So in my opinion, that is pretty good. Like I didn't have too much dust on me or like any of my stuff on my table. So that is honestly pretty good and I'm kind of enjoying this. So yes, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and we'll jump straight into the nail art. All right, so my hands are washed and we are ready to jump into this clown nail art and I'm a little nervous but let's go ahead and get into it. But before we do that, let me go ahead and show you everything that we're gonna need for today's nail set. Okay, so this is everything that we're gonna need. It's mainly just a lot of gel polish colors. So let me go through that first. So the first thing we're gonna need is of course, a little bit of top coat. Next, we're gonna need two different blues. I'm gonna be using this turquoise blue and this sky blue. I'm also gonna be using this neon pink, some black gel polish and some white gel polish. And I used this in my last video, I'm gonna be using this jelly red gel polish. And I'm also gonna be using this color cube and I'm mainly just gonna be using this for the red. And for the decorations, I'm gonna be using some red glitter as well as some rhinestone glue. And lastly, I'm gonna be using these nail charms and and I'm gonna be using these little bows inside. Okay, and that's everything, so let's get into it. But of course, before we get into it, I'm going to wipe my nails off with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Okay, my nails are wiped off, and I have my reference photo here on the side, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and start off by drawing a French tip on my pointer finger, my pinky, and my thumbnail. So I'm first just gonna put a little bit of this white gel polish onto my mixing plate. All right, and I'm just going to start off by drawing my French tip. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to wipe down the sides 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and cure this for about 30 seconds. Okay, so I have the fringe tips on and I think for now I'm going to focus on my pointer finger. Now this kind of has the like hypnotizing swirl on the nail and I think I kind of want to tackle that first because it might be a little bit challenging. So let's get it out of the way. So I'm going to take this red jelly gel polish and put this onto my mixing plate and I'm going to be using this short liner brush because I'm going to be starting at the very center and working my way outwards and I don't want this to not move the way I want it to. I'm just going to put some of this onto my brush and I'm just going to make a tiny dot in the center first. Okay, we're off to a good start. And then I'm going to kind of create an E shape, like the lowercase E. And this is already very challenging, so definitely do take your time. Okay, so this is where we are now. What I'm gonna do is kind of make it look a little bit drippy so it resembles blood a little bit better. So I'm just gonna use my dotting tool for this part and I'm just going to kind of make it a little bit messy, if that makes sense. So if your swirl wasn't perfect, do not worry. This part isn't supposed to look too neat.
All right, so I think that looks a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and cure this for about 30 seconds. So now we're gonna work on this pinky nail and this nail is gonna have some stripes on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some pink and blue onto my mixing plate. All right, so I'm gonna take my long nail art brush and I'm just gonna create a stripe pattern going down the nail. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and cure this. All right, and now I'm gonna go in with this turquoise blue, and I'm gonna be using this to outline the French tip. Okay, and before I move on to my thumbnail, I'm just gonna draw some white stars on this nail. All right, so now let's jump to the thumb and I'm gonna be creating a checker texture. And what I'm first gonna do is create the crisscrosses on the nail first. So I'm first gonna do some diagonal lines from this side down to this side. And you don't want these lines to be super thick because you want the diamonds to be nice and crisp. So that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing going in the opposite direction. Okay, so we have something that looks a little bit like this. All right, and I'm gonna work in filling in these squares. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cure this. All right, and I'm gonna go back in with this pink and outline this French tip. And similarly to my pinky, I'm just gonna finish this off with some stars. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm going to move on from these two fingers. Now we're going to work on these clowns. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a wide airbrush effect underneath. And unfortunately, I don't have any eyeshadow, nor do I have the airbrush tool. So I'm going to have to create an airbrush using gel polish. So we're going to see what we can do. All right, so to create the airbrush effect, I'm going to be using my fan art brush to kind of stipple it on to the center of the nail. And for that, I'm gonna be using this white gel polish. Now, this is something I used to do a while ago and I haven't done it in a long time, so it might be a little bit rusty, but I think we'll be okay. So I always start out in the center of the nail, just like that. And I like to work this outwards and make sure to disperse it as best as I can. Okay, I think that's a good first layer. I'm gonna go ahead and flash cure this. Okay, I'm just going to continue to do that until I have a good opacity. Okay, so the airbrush looks pretty decent. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. All right, so now we're gonna get into the clown faces. The first thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of this black gel polish onto my mixing plate. And what I wanna do first is draw these eyes. And I'm gonna be creating kind of like a half circle effect for these eyes. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and cure this. All right, and now I'm gonna work on the eye details. So I'm first gonna start out by using this turquoise blue, and I'm gonna have this eye looking towards the right. And I'm gonna have these eyes looking in the opposite direction. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flash cure this. All right, and now we're gonna finally work on the black detailing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go around the eye shape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this area here with some black.
So this is what we have so far. And now I'm just gonna draw some little spikes on the tops and bottoms of these nails. All right, and now I'm gonna draw some upside down U shapes on top of the nail. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, and now we're gonna work on drawing the smile and the nose. I'm gonna get into this red gel paint and I'm kind of trying to avoid the blue pieces. I don't know why there's blue in here, but anyway. I'm gonna take this red and just draw a little circle for a nose. And now I'm gonna make two dots on either side of my nail. This is gonna represent the kind of inner corners of the mouth. And now I'm just gonna take a liner brush and I'm gonna create a U-shape connecting these two dots. And you kind of want this part to be a little bit thick so that you can draw the mouth like opening in the middle. And I'm just gonna fill this in. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to this nail, except this smile is gonna be going upside down. Okay, and I'm gonna go back in with some black gel polish just to draw a little bit of an opening in the mouth. And on the nose, I'm just gonna add a little bit of shine using this white gel polish. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cure this. Okay, and to finish off these clowns, I'm going to give this one some tears. And for that, I'm gonna go in with this baby blue and I'm gonna be mixing this in with a little bit of rhinestone glue. I just need like the tiniest dot of this. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and with this dotting tool to first dot one this sky blue. I'm gonna be creating a little blob like this first. And then I'm gonna take this really short liner brush to kind of drag it into a teardrop shape. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and cure this. All right, so the majority of the nail art is done. The last thing I'm gonna do is start drawing the blood drips. And for that, I'm going to go back in with this jelly red color. And I'm first gonna start off by using this dotting tool to create some little dots and drops of blood first. And now I'm gonna take my liner brush and I'm just going to drag them upwards. And I'm just going to curve in these little pieces. And then I'm just gonna fill in this top area. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So a little earlier, I did say that I was gonna use some red glitter, but that feels a little bit like Christmas and I'm not going for that. So I think I might just stick with this red jelly color. So I'm gonna go ahead and cure this for about 30 seconds. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing to these two fingers as well as my thumb and I'll come right back.
All right, so before I finish this off with top coat, I'm gonna go ahead and glue on the little bow on my thumb and my pinky. And I forgot to mention, I'm also gonna be throwing in these little beads on top of the stars. So I'm gonna go in with this rhinestone glue to glue on these little pieces. Okay, change of plans, I'm not going to use these because uh, they're not giving. So I think I'm gonna keep it simple and just use some regular gems instead. All right, so everything is finished. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this off with a little bit of top coat. Okay, so here is what my nails are looking like with the nail art 100% done, and I love this. I love it so much, and I'm definitely very proud of myself for actually executing this on my own. And even though I did grab inspiration from a multitude of different nail sets, I am so proud of how I pieced this together. Like, that's not really my main issue. And I do think that even though there's like pinks and blues, up against like red and black, I think that it goes together really nicely. So to go ahead and finish all of this off, I'm gonna go on with a little bit of some cuticle oil. And that completes today's set. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know this one was definitely a longer video than the ones I posted recently, but I wanted to go out with a bang and give you guys something that I am like super, super proud of. And I can definitely say that this nail set is one that I am super proud of. As always, I would love to hear what you guys think of this nail set down in the comments. Would you have worn it for last Halloween? Um, as you know, it's kind of like November now, but would you have worn it for Halloween and would you possibly wear it even now? I feel like if you got rid of some of the blood, it could definitely be an all year round nail set. So definitely do feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments. I am super excited to jump into more fall and winter nail sets. I will be sticking to fall for now because it's not winter yet and I'm not exactly prepared for winter nail sets, but those will be coming soon definitely do stay on the lookout for those. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, I will leave my donation links for Palestine in the description box of this video. And I will also be searching for some more information on how to help Congo and Sudan during these very crazy times. And I do feel like it's very important that we are staying aware of these topics and that we are talking about it and trying our best to combat injustice and, you know, I do think that it's, you know, good to talk about and just to be open and transparent on these things. But as always, I want to say thank you guys so, so much for tuning in today and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.